Now, before studying logs, uh, you may need to remind yourself about all of your exponent rules, even if it's uh, prior knowledge for most of you. So, uh, firstly, we have a multiplication rule. Okay, um, how do we do 2 cubed times 2 to the power of 7? Um, well, okay, you may know the rule, but um, to explain the rule, we could say that this is 2 times 2 times 2, and this itself is multiplied by 2 times 2 times, well, 7 twos. Okay, so this is 3 twos, this is 7 twos. Okay, and now we have a, just a long chain of twos being multiplied together. Okay, how many in total? Well, I've got 3 here, I've got 7 here, and, uh, well, that means I have 10 in total. Okay, so 2 to the power of 10. Okay, but how did I get 10? Okay, well, I essentially counted up these twos here uh, by addition, okay? And you can use that as your rule from now on. Uh, this will be 2 to the power of 3 plus 7, and hence 2 to the power of 10. So, in fact, we can write this as a rule. A to the, uh, x to the power of a times x to the power of b is equal to x to the power of a plus b. Okay, and this would be uh, 1,024. Okay, uh, so how about division? Uh, well, we can do a similar thing here. We can do 3 times 3 times 3, uh, 6 times, divided by, um, well, the same thing, but 4 threes um, on the denominator. Uh, how would I calculate this? Uh, well, I don't really want to do 3 to the power of 6 or 3 to the power of 4. Um, and you might be able to spot that I can actually just do some cancellation here, leaving me with just 3 times 3. OK, 3 squared, 9. OK, but um, how could I skip straight to that? Well, I had 6 3s here. I had 4 3s there. Um, and well, I cancelled out as many as were on the denominator. Uh, in fact, I subtracted uh, four threes from the top uh, by cancelling them. Okay, so I had six and I took away four by cancellation, uh, essentially giving me a subtraction there. And that's our rule. x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b would be x to the power of a minus b. Okay. Um, here I have uh, alpha cubed squared. What do I do with that? Uh, well, anything squared is just multiplied by itself. So let's try that first. Um, I have alpha cubed times alpha cubed. OK. Um, and how can I sort of view that? I could view that as alpha times alpha times alpha times well, the same thing again. OK, and just like in the first one, I now just have a long chain of uh, alphas multiplied together. I have six of them, but how do I how do I get that six? Um, well, I have two lots of three. OK, in fact, I have uh, two times three. OK. Um, and that is how we can evaluate it from now on. Okay, if I have a power of a power, then I can multiply those powers together. Okay, x to the power of a to the power of b is x to the power of a times b. Okay, um, so similar to the first rule, but kind of in reverse, you've got to be careful here. Okay, this was when you have the same base and different exponents here different bases, same exponent. So how do I go about doing this? Well, I have um, four x's multiplied together times uh, four y's multiplied together. Um, now, uh, multiplication can go in any order. Seven times eight is the same as eight times seven. Um, and the same thing is true when I have eight things multiplied together. Um, so I could actually just start writing this as x times y times x times y times x times y 
and so on. Um, and now I just have four lots of these uh, XYs. In other words, XY to the power of four. Okay, so X to the power of four times Y to the power of four can just be written as XY to the power of four. Um, so X to the power of N times Y to the power of N can be written as XY to the power of N. Okay, and this can be help, very helpful in either direction using this rule, as can all the others, but especially this one. Okay, uh, we are not done yet. Um, what about five to the power of zero? Okay, well, you may just know a rule and just think, well, anything to the power of zero equals one, and you'd be right. Uh, but why? Well, one way of showing it, um, there's a couple of good ways, but uh, I like to go with this one. I can think of five to the power of zero as five to the power of two minus two, or three minus three, anything like that. Okay, and by my subtraction rule, this is 5 squared divided by 5 squared. Um, and well, that's 25 divided by 25. Not really relevant because this is clearly just something divided by itself, i.e. 1. OK, so absolutely anything to the power of 0 equals 1. Um, apart from maybe 0 to the power of 0, which is undefined. Uh, or up for debate. And you can use a similar method here um, for negative exponents. Okay, you could say that negative exponents, um, I could say that this is uh, 5 to the power of uh, 1 minus 3. Okay, because 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Okay, and this would be 5 over 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, this would be 5 to the power of 1 over 5 to the power of 3 by my second rule on the previous page. Okay, and well, I can do some cancelling out again, um, leaving me with just 1 here. Uh, this is 1 over, this is now 1 over 5 squared. Well, how does that relate to the original thing I had? Well, I had minus 2 as my original exponent. And now I have a positive exponent, but it's one over that. Okay, so five to the power of negative two equals one over five to the power of positive two. And I can sum that up by saying x to the power of negative n equals one over x to the power of n. Okay, almost done. What about fractions? Um, well, this one's a bit trickier to show. What happens if I cube this? If I cube this by my third rule on the previous page, this is five to the power of three times a third. That's one. So this is just five. Okay, so five to the power of one third cubed equals five. So why does that help us? Um, well, I just have something cubed equals five. Um, I want to know what, I wanted to know what this equals. Okay, let's just substitute that out for n temporarily. n cubed, okay, I'm calling this n. n cubed equals five. What is n? Well, to rearrange that, you do the cube root. So n is the cube root of five. Okay, but what was n? n was this thing inside the bracket up here. So now I'm saying that this thing inside the bracket, five to the power of one third, is the same as the cube root of five. Okay, and this three and three is not a coincidence. This is our rule. X to the power of one over N is the nth root of X. Okay, so something to the power of a half is the square root of that thing. Okay, how would you use this though, finally? if um, you have something that's not just one over n, for example, two thirds. Um, well, you can use uh, our power of powers rule in a way um, and say that this is eight to the power of one third times two. 
Well, that's 8 to the power of 1 third to the power of 2. 8 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of 8. Um, and this is squared. The cube root of 8 is 2. So now it's just 2 squared. And that is 4. Um, OK, so split it up into 1 over n times whatever you have on the numerator. You can go, the I put the fraction inside the bracket here. You can um, think of it in the, in the opposite way. Um, and do it as uh, 8 squared times, uh, uh, 8 to the power of uh, 2 times 1 third. So 8 squared to the power of a third. That's 64 to the power of a third, and that is the cube root of 64, and that obviously still equals 4. So you could go either way, but usually the first way is more convenient to do. And those are your exponent rules.